Well, hey, dear viewers, welcome back to another episode of Phil Flanagan Talks About a Deranged Piece of Media That Some Maniac Decided to Throw Out There. And I know some of you pretentious bastards get all uppity when I call uh, when I call these people psychotic. So it's just art, guys. Look, man, I don't know what to tell you, but I do not think that Geiger's work is very well grounded in reality. But the deranged maniac we're going to be talking about today is a rather popular fellow by the name of Phil Tibbet. Now, if you don't know who Phil Tibbet is, then you really should, and you've definitely heard of his work before. Phil Tibbet was a guy, he did all the special effects for Star Wars, for Robocop. He was supposed to do these special effects for Jurassic Park, but never ended up doing it. Basically, if there was any film from the 70s, 80s, and even 90s, then Phil Tibbet was the guy who made it happen. And last year, Phil Tibbet released his masterpiece, known as Mad God. Now, Mad God was a film in the making for about 30 years because Phil Tibbet was frequently on and off with this film. So he started work on it in the 90s and like only recently got around to actually finishing it. And I've seen a lot of criticism of this film that the, you know, that the sort of stop motion, because it's an entirely stop motion film, that the stop motion looks very old, right? Like it's not really modernized. Uh, which is kind of true, some parts of it do look odd, but that's, you know, because some parts of it were actually made, like, 30 years ago. But generally speaking, it was made by Phil Tibbet, so this film is, for the most part, it's very spectacular, it's very well done. One thing that you can't say is that, you know, it's poor quality, because it's not everything about this film is so well and carefully crafted, it's so interesting. One thing I will say about this film, however, is, well, I saw it earlier this year, and I'm only just now getting around to making a video about it, because somebody had actually asked me to about a month or two ago, so I thought, you know, for that person, I'm going to talk about it. Because, looking back, Mad God was pretty good. It was, how do I put this? It was the most interesting, most spectacular, most imaginative and creative piece of work that I've ever seen. Never watch it. You should never watch this film. Don't even, don't even dare try watch this film. Now, that is a peculiar thing to say about a film that I give nothing but high praises for, but... Yeah, uh, it, like there's not. I don't know how to explain why you shouldn't watch this film without you watching it yourself, right? Look, the to get, give you a good idea, right? Is from what I understand, Phil Tibbet said that this film was a collection of his nightmares, the thing that he was seeing in his dreams. Which I guess that tells you a lot about Phil Tibbet. But there's so much just shit in this film. That's not even like, that's not a metaphor. That's not exaggeration. Like quite literal shit. It gets to the point where you think it might be like a bit of a fetish for the guy. Like, let, let me explain. So there's a bit in this film where there are these little drone workers and they're like these little construction workers being used to build this big construction, which we never really get to see. They're just... I guess, building stuff, and you get to see how they're made. So the main character is wandering through these different rooms and chambers, and he comes across all of these giants that are strapped into electric chairs that are just being repeatedly and constantly electrocuted, and they're all just shitting into this big funnel that's then going down into the mouth of this giant monster that's just eating all of this shit as it falls down. And this monster is just a head with pipes coming out of it, which then somehow goes into another machine that then creates these drone workers. So the, these little guys are made from just this shit that's been just fucking ingested by a big monster and pumped out of a factory. That's how, like, freakish this film gets. But let's talk about the story, because I really like the story of things. I really like narratives. And the problem with Mad God, because it's just a collection of Phil Tibbetts' dreams, is it doesn't really have one. But I think it has more of a narrative than people actually give it credit for. Like, let me explain what I interpreted the story to be from, like, the film. So, there are clearly two sides that are at war here. There's, like, an underworld side which lives in this just decrepit, destroyed, like, junkyard of a world that's just fucking been obliterated, pretty much. And they're at war with the people above them that are also somewhat similar, but they're more human-like. Like, there are bits where you see soldiers fighting, uh, or where the soldiers are all, like, lined up, and it looks kind of like the Nuremberg rallies. And so one soldier from the surface is actually sent down to the deep, dark depths 
in order to like blow off the enemy i guess he's got this bomb it's in a suitcase and he's got to go down into the underworld and destroy everything right destroy all its inhabitants which so we're not really sure why they're at war we know there's this like little wizard guy who i'm aptly naming the wizard now he's got long fingernails and he clearly wants the underworld to be destroyed there is the uh there is this like ghostly thing with a witch doc not a witch doctor's mask a plague doctor's mask and this uh, alchemist who seem like some sort of ringleaders and maybe them and the wizard have some sort of beef going on you know and so the overall story appears to be that so the assassin sent down to blow up the underworld and he is sent like deep down he's got to go on this journey and he sees all these horrific things as he goes along because that's the first thing to note about this film it's a definitely a it's definitely more of a it's about the journey not the destination because it doesn't matter if you know what happens what matters is that you know your experience of that thing which someone telling you about it on the internet probably can't do it justice so either go watch it or heed my advice and stay away from it so he's going down, he's trekking down deeper and down into this uh, hell pit, seeing all these horrible monstrosities as they go. And you get this sense that nobody in this world is happy. Like, you know, in Scorn, it was all like death and decay, right? Imagine like that. Imagine the whole thing is just the assembly plant from Scorn, except, uh, except it's just a junkyard. It's not even, there's no like biomechanical aspect to it. It's just... A fucking like junk heap and he the assassin goes down he gets to the deepest bottom of the underworld and he's ready to block you see that there are many 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 uh little suitcases around so it's clear that there will be many people who've come like many assassins who have come before our dearest assassin here but he's going down as deep as he can he tries to flip on the bomb to set it off and the bomb breaks and then he gets captured by this actually horrifying creature i don't know how phil tibbet thinks up of these monsters but my boy's got a boy's got a brain on him i'm sure uh, i'm sure a psychiatric ward would love to take a look at it so then the assassin is captured and this is actually i think one of the most horrifying scenes i have ever seen right and so what basically happens is they paralyze the assassin and then they dissect him. You know, they start pulling out all of his organs and then for some reason they start pulling money and such out. But that's not actually the horrifying bit of the scene. The horrifying bit is this, like the scene just before it, right? The section where they've just paralyzed him and he's on the bed. He's got this one like eye that's like all dried up and it's just staring at the clock. He's in like just this tight medical environment just lying there watching the clock as the clock slowly gets slower and slower and um, that bit fucking hits hard if you've been in a medical environment then you know that the problem with medical environments is there are many times where you just have to sit there and wait like if you're the patient you just sit there and wait you don't know what's going to happen and there is that harrowing experience that you get from hospitals i know i have experience i know what it's like to have the doctors rummage around in your insides without any anesthetic that's a fun story that i'll have to tell you about sometime dear viewers so they pull a baby out of him as they're like ripping out all of his organs and then they hand the baby to that lady, the plague doctor fella, who goes takes it to the alchemist. And then uh, the story kind of starts over with another assassin who gets thrown into the meat grinder and sent down. Now, it's after this point, well, kind of. It's towards the end of the second assassin story that the story, it gets kind of nonsensical. So Phil Tibbetts said, uh, from what I remember, Phil Tibbetts said, that he actually did not like this film, right? He didn't like this film, and he, well, kind of. He wanted to get rid of it, because it was, like, fucking with him or something like that. Uh, that. That's just my crude interpretation of what he said. And so the ending does feel a bit very abstract, if you get my drift. Like, it feels like there was, you know, there's the pieces of a story here, but it gets very abstract, which, as I've noticed, is a big problem with these sorts of artistic pieces that people do. Like, they have an actual story, but then when it comes to actually finishing it, uh, it, it, it kind of fucks off. Like, 
you know, it's good throughout until the end, pretty much, is usually what it is. And so what happens at the end of Mad God? I don't, I don't fucking know. I can't explain it to you. It's too, it's too wild. Everyone dies and everything blows up. The end. So generally speaking, what do I think about the film? Well, I actually, I really like it. I think it's one of my favourite films ever. I, my One of my favourite films used to be, you know, uh, Don't Be a Menace to the South Central While You Drink Your Juice in the Hood. I think Mad God tops that for just how weird and wacky it is. It's like, the thing about Mad God is it it's such, it builds such a good environment, such a good atmosphere about it that I've not seen replicated in really anything else. And how it does that with such dehumanized characters, it's like it intentionally dehumanizes its characters, but at the same time that you still feel something about them. Like, let's take the assassin, right? Like, he's just constantly up in all this old gear, right? All this old, like, uh, just a leather jacket and old looking sort of like World War One type gear, where, like, just very inhuman and scary, really. But the thing is, like, he still has all these human emotions. You can see by the way he moves and interacts with environments, you can see the emotion being delivered, and it's delivered really well. And of course, needless to say, this thing's visuals are stunning. It's very grandiose and incredible. If you enjoy stop motion, this is definitely a film you're going to love. There are a few scenes of live action, but most of it is entirely done uh, with stop motion. You know, because that's like Phil Tibbetts, Phil Tibbetts shtick. And because it's done by Phil Tibbetts, who's like the stop motion guy, the big boy in the stop motion industry, uh, then like the boy of boys, one might say, then uh, then he's definitely the guy who's going to make a good looking stop motion film, which he did. There is an amazing contrast in which some scenes can be very small and down to earth, like where he's talking to this poor little, uh, poor little worker that just wants to go with him. That wants he to be helped and get out of this like hell, but then scenes where it's like more grandiose, we see all these fucking nuclear bombs going off. I know many people found my channel through Scorn, and so I'm going to compare it to Scorn real quick. I do think that while Scorn's artist like artistic style is far more intriguing, interesting, Mad God's like sort of artistic style when it comes to emotions uh, is much better. Like it much better accomplishes these ideas of like despair, hopelessness, and in many ways, melancholy, because there's some like, not particularly sad, it's some bits that like, in other films, you know, where he grabs his little uh, bike and not oh, falls apart, that'd be like, funny, right? That'd be like a little funny moment. And this film does it and it weaves it in so well, regardless of what the film's actually about. There is just nothing but like, hopelessness nihilistic is a very good way to describe this film i think but uh, you know it, it does it really well that you get all the like, these little tad bits of um ju just like i'm not sure how to describe what kind it's not just comedy comedy but it's all little funny things that happen little quirky little bits one might say but it's 83 minutes long, and it's definitely worth the watch simply for the experience of it. Now, many of you will feel disgusted, especially if you're a very visual person, because when it comes to art, I get it tries to point a lot more to, like, uh, human emotions, and so I think if you're a more empathetic person, these kind of things hit harder, because you're not focusing on all the direct visuals of what's going on, you're actually more focusing on the emotions of it, which I... If you start focusing on how the characters are feeling, then I think you get a better grasp for what these things are. Now, of course, in terms of, like, an actual film, it is a bit of a jumbled mess. And this is where we're going to talk about criticisms. So, my, this film has the same problem that I criticise Scorn for having, in that things just happen so suddenly, and then they're gone and that's it right uh it's it's something that i think that in these sorts of situations you should get more of a feel of right like you, they should give you time to simmer with these things rather than them showing up for a few seconds in the film and then disappearing forever as if like they were never there because there's a lot of things that just feel completely inconsequential to the overall story since i am a big like I, I firmly <laughs> I firmly like the idea that everything should serve a role. 
that you shouldn't just have pointless crap in it just for the sake of pointless crap. Which I know like that it serves roles for the theme, like the she it creature, but it didn't really serve a point for the overall narrative, which tends to be my problems with these things. Mind you, the worst f a franchise for this type of behavior is Star Wars, where basically they're in the entirety of their law is completely pointless for the overall narrative. Fuck you, Star Wars fans. But Mad God can be somewhat forgiven for this in that it's more just meant to be the assassin's venture in journey down into darkness type thing where he's just seeing suffering as he's going along so it can be somewhat forgiven for that i do hear a lot of criticisms of the soundtrack which i'm not sure why because i really like the soundtrack to this film i think it's very like sad and serene at the same time the backing track to this film really does fit its melancholy very well that I do have the problem in that, like, just because a film or some sort of piece of media is an artistic depiction of someone feeling their deepest emotions does not mean that it deserves praise as much as many of you pretentious bastards in my comment section might think so. And so if you really want it to be a film with full, wide, uh, you know, everyone knows about it and loves it, but, like, and fucking... The, the shit, there needs to be a lot more to it for it to actually be better. It needs to be deeper. It can't just be like, it does feel like the whole film is just a sightseeing tour from the assassin. And a lot of the emotions get then lost in how just it kind of throws everything it's constructed away at various points. Like, well, there's the she it. It's just killed a monkey creature. Uh, move on to the next scene. Hori, hori. But generally speaking, that's about where my criticisms of it end, because in retrospective, I think the film in the like minds of people and like the public space sits perfectly where it deserves. It occupies a very niche space for film enthusiasts or people who enjoy stop motion in general. It's not a film that is generally widely known, nor is it particularly one that you would have a conversation about around the dinner table that's for sure it's i think it, this occupation of a niche that is like a sort of cult classic for enthusiasts such as myself is exactly where it deserves to be for what it is and one of the biggest reasons for it of course is it's it's lack of plot right like Allegory is great and all, but allegory only works if it has a story to it. And Mad God is one of those things where it feels like the pieces to the story are all there, like I explained earlier in the video. Like, it does have more of a story than people give it credit for, but a lot of it is nonsensical. But I don't think it's supposed to be, like, you know, like, like a proper narrative story like that. It's, like it's supposed to really just be filled tidbits. Uh, a little look into Phil Tibbetts' emotional stage, like a little mind, what he thinks about the world, I suppose, because one could say that it's a very... I've heard it being called, like, an anti-war film before. I think it's more of an, an allegory for just the state of humanity, just its uh, ruthless butchery. Like, it's a very doomer film, one would say. And you certainly don't come away with it having greater faith in your fellow man, I can say that for sure. It's definitely one of those things where it's niche weirdness is what attracts people to it. And I will say that I am very glad that Phil Tibbet didn't do what most fil <laughs> what most film studios do, where they just torn down their art, like their vision in order to get better ratings and all that. Like you, you wouldn't have all shit and blood and guts everywhere to. Uh, if you wanted the film to appeal to a wider audience, of course. And so Phil Tibbet is clearly just making what he wanted to make, which is very commendable in of itself. Though the big problem with passion projects is, you know, time. Time is a very finite resource, which projects will always come under the strain of. And Phil Tibbet can certainly say that because it took him 30 freaking years to do it. Which is lucky he wasn't bound by any contract, only his uh, declining mental state. And of course, if you're interested in Phil Tibbet dragging you into the depths of his insanity, then you can watch it on Shudder. Now, I shouldn't say this, but 
I didn't bother watching it on Shudder because, you know, as they say, your ho, your ho of pirates life for me. Of course, I wouldn't recommend doing that because my computer probably now has like 50 different Trojans on it. But if you're a loser who doesn't want all of your personal information stolen by some weirdo on the internet, then I guess you should probably fork over the cash to watch it on Shudder. Mad God sure is one of the most beautifully deranged pieces of media out there. So, <laughs> it's like, it is worth a watch. Just fucking hold on to your little minds while you do it. You don't want to lose them. Anyway, so that'll be the end of the video. And I'll catch you next time, dear viewers. <laughs> Let's go.